get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. This is Cleveland Cassis for IFL TV in association with Macklin Stream Marbella win Rotherham today. This is top. What did you say? I said this is top. What's that? Is it really Coogan is being me? Jesus, it's been so long. It's like you've avoided me. You don't like me no more. It's because I missed your fight. It's been so long. Do you know what? To be fair, I've been at both your Chilemba fights. I've been at Edison Miranda. I apologise for them too. McIntosh. They were good McKenzie. It was a good one. But I missed your defining night. Missed the biggest night of the night. In South Africa, when you were... Celebrating with his people. <laughs> well, I might celebrate, because you got well, knocked you, well, you thought you was going to be, but you know you wasn't. You all wrote me off, Coops. What can you do? Just got to keep proving the fat kid's still got a bit of life in him. How are you? More like me. Training hard and camps camp, innit? You have to there. Good days, bad days. Tired days. Lonesome days, it's just days, my days pass, passing days and hours, I just want the 15th to come. It's a bit of a shame you haven't had a press conference to this already. You know, you've Do you know what, a lot of people have said that because oh, BJ's a good talker and Tony can talk and it means nothing mate, it really means nothing. The only thing I've found a bit alarming is I've seen this video yesterday. Uh, and I'm saying I'm not going to entertain trash talk. Well, you know, let's be honest, BJ. Trash talk got you to fight, mate. I'm just being honest and saying as it is. Trash talk got him to fight, so it's funny how he's not involved in trash talk. And all of a sudden, I'm the best cruiserweight in the world now. Uh, he's saying, when all, when just let's rewind 12 months ago, I wasn't a cruiserweight. Uh, I'm not that good of a fighter. He said he beat me easy. Uh, I don't need he's an old man in Brudov. So you know. He put five thousand dollars on the car to knock me out. And the five grand you've lost. Uh, so many things he says. He's, he's a walking contradiction. He really is. Uh, in my opinion he's everything that's wrong with boxing. I detest boxers like him. He's, he's a famed glory hunter. And that's that's not what boxers should be about. I look at us like gladiators of many years ago. We turn up to the arena and we fight. And this fella is more interested in taking pictures with famous people than he is in fighting, in my opinion. So that's what it is. I think he's a clown. Uh, funny enough, his, his own countryman, a friend of mine, a very well respected fighter uh, in the US and a very well respected broadcast man as well had a few home truths about him and uh, it was funny because the words they said about BJ was BJ's a fighter who always wanted to be a movie star but he's stuck in boxing and that kind of makes me understand a little bit more why he dislikes me so much now so my the fellow who took away his shot. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm gonna take this away his shot both out the ring and I'm gonna take it away in the ring as well, believe you me, I'm not messing around with this fella. I do think he's a good fighter, regardless of what people say on Twitter and this and that, but uh, never really been beaten clearly and definitively in my opinion. He's lost two fights. He lost to Shumanov, I don't care what he says. He can say one or he wants. Come up with that bullshit stats. Uh, punch stats or box stats, whatever it is, that shit he's talking. I landed more power punches. Shumanov boxed the fucking head off you. He gave you angles, he gave you things that you couldn't deal with, he gave you foot movements. How fucking embarrassing is it for a fighter to go back to the corner? A man of 30 career professional fights, four for previous titles, go back to a corner and ask, How do I cut the ring off? What the fuck is that about? How fucking embarrassing is that? What is that about Coogan? That annoys me that. Because that this guy is an analyst for a boxing 
for, for numerous boxing fights, title fights. This guy's an analyst, and he doesn't understand how to cut a ring off. He says this in the corner himself. How do I do that? His trainer is saying, cut the ring off, BJ. How do I do that? And he's looking around for help. You've got to be kidding me. I'm I get annoyed at the thought of it. This guy's commentating on fights. This guy is saying he's a finished article, this, this and this. Okie doke, BJ. You keep talking. Talking got you this fight. You don't deserve this fight, in all honesty. In my opinion. He doesn't deserve the fight. But he's got the fight because he's annoyed me. What's he done to deserve a coup? He lost to Shumanov. He lost to Danny Green. The bigger, stronger, younger man against Danny Green. The bigger, stronger man against BJ Flores. And what did he do with it? I show people what to do when you are the bigger, stronger man against the London Macabre. Probably a man who's more talented than me. Probably technically better boxer than me. But I showed what you do when you're the bigger, stronger man. I ripped them apart because I was the biggest stronger man on the night. And when I fight blowjob Flores, I'm going to show I'm the biggest stronger man on that night too. Although you can say he's just a kid who's got a body like a teenager, believe you me, I eat like a teenager as well. BJ Flores mentioned your name a couple of years ago. That's what I'm saying. He's been chasing me for, for, for a while, ever since I moved up to Cruiserweight. And I, and, I, and I know he views me as an easy fight. I know he does. He doesn't. He doesn't so much after the Macabre fight. But before it, he did, and he probably had Masternak down to beat me, as a lot of people had Masternak down to beat me. Uh, he definitely had Macabre down to beat me. He asked the dollar bookies who lost loads of money. But I know what I'm capable of, and I believe in myself more than anyone else believes in me. So. I know what I can do, but I also know it can all end in one punch. We're basically heavyweights, we're small heavyweights. There's, in my opinion, the cruiserweight is basically a small heavyweight division because you take this division 20 back 20 years ago and we're all the same size as the heavyweights were 20 years ago. So we're basically small heavyweights really, by that, and by going by that kind of standard and what I'm talking about there, we're just the heavyweight division now, it's like there is a super heavyweight division, there is giants among, amongst the division, you know, your Klitschko's, your Joshua's, your Price's, your Fiori's, the giants, the massive men, then there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a size difference and dimension between them and the next ones down, so then you have your, your Holyfield, your Ruiz's and your Tyson's and your, you know, you have your fighters who are, who are just as good, better technically than they are, but they're just smaller and the, the bigger men kind of cross because of the size, but I don't know, Cooks, you know, what do I know? It's just boxing, in it? I remember speaking to you um, a couple of months ago uh, in Manchester yeah. and you said that it'd be very hard to top that night at Goodison it's impossible. now in your career. It's impossible to in your head, what, what could come close to that potentially? Obviously, this is your first defence yeah. at Car Arena. But what fight in that division? Nothing can top Nothing. that. Nothing can ever top that night. I lived my dream, childhood dream, lifelong dream. It could be an old any person in the world, you can hand on the heart say, I had a dream and a, and a vision as a child, and I fulfilled it and lived it. And they're still here to tell the story. Do you know anybody who can tell you that? I'll hand on heart and do it and say it. Do you know anyone in this world who can say, I've lived my childhood dream? My childhood dream was to stick a ring in the middle of Goodison Park and become world champion. I did do it, but it was in a movie. I've never done it for real. But I, I don't. I personally, in my lifetime, I don't know of anybody who can honestly say they lived their life on dream. I mean, there's, I know from a few football players, you know, play for the Everton and stuff like that, and they've lived a lifelong dream, you know. Yeah, but I don't know of any. I just don't know anyone who can come out there and just say I've, li I've, I've lived my dream. I've lived the dream, I really have, and, and then not a day goes by that it, that it doesn't, I don't recollect on it. You think about it. Your um, mandatory challenger, yeah. um, Marius Bredis, is on the bill as well. Yes, he is. So that will be your next fight if it goes Shall. Yes. to plan. What's yeah. the idea of getting him on the undercut then? Uh, to, to get him out and have a look at him up close yeah, against on. someone who I know, someone who I know what they're capable of. Give me a good look at him, really. Simon Valili. Yeah, 
Yeah. Simon's a good fighter, uh, unbeaten nine and out. Can punch, can box. Uh, former GB representative uh, knows the game well. So you know, it's a huge step up. It's a huge task, task for him. But I'm giving him the opportunity. I've always believed in giving fighters opportunities. And he's come in. He's, he's been a good sparring partner man in this camp. And. Uh, you know, I just wanted to give the kid an opportunity and give him a chance. He deserves the chance, so, you know, I'm happy for him. I hope he goes out there and grabs it in both hands. I hope he beats Bredis, but it's a, it's a big ask. It really, really is. But, you know, we'll see. One thing's for sure. Either fighter that comes through, it's facing me next. Um, I want to ask you, uh, obviously, your opinion on what happened uh, last week in Glasgow uh, with Mike Tao. Uh, yeah. Tragic situation, Heartbreaking. Um, and a, a real harsh reality of, of the sport you're in. I'd say it to people all the time, they don't really listen to me. It's it brings uh, it opens your eyes up, and it makes it brings the reality of exactly what this game is about. It brings it to light, and, it, and it's it's the harsh realities of boxing, mate. It really is. It's so sad, really. It broke me heart to read the, uh, the letter that his missus wrote out. It just broke me heart. Me missus, she broke her heart too. It's really sad. Baby left behind, no father. You know, his, I know his missus says he died doing something he loved, but what you do, Cooks? I, I don't fight because I enjoy it. I, don't f I stopped enjoying it a long time ago. I don't fight because I fight because I get paid good money. And I fight because. It's all I know. So th that's why I fight. I fight because I've got to put food on the table for the kids. This, I'm telling you now, this is all I know. So, you know, a kid like me who's come from nothing, come from, you know, tried his best in school, just wasn't clever enough, wasn't good enough. Tried his best at football, was too fat and lazy to do the football. Not lazy, but just, just wasn't good enough. So, my only salvation was fighting. Fighting all. Or, you know, end up on a street life, so which which is not what I want. I'm, I'm no kind of example for my kids. So because I've I've worked every single job I could possibly do. I've been a lifeguard. I've been a labourer. I've worked on the railway. I've worked on nightclub doors. I've worked as I've done every job I possibly can do, and I can't do it anymore. I've worked in pillar factories. I've done everything and I'm not the kind of person who can who can just graft on nine to five. So there is only a, a few methods and ways for me in this world. I'm a very driven person and, and I want things and I have to get them by any means necessary. So at this moment in time boxing is paying the bills. So that's the best way of saying it and I can only God bless them, my Tao's family, his children, his missus. It's just so, so sad. It, it, it dawns upon you the extremes that professional boxing brings. You know, Joe Gallagher says a lot of things, a lot of crazy things, but one thing he did say that such is supposed to be legal, it's legalised killing. And you can't dispute that. You really can't. It's legalised killing, mate. And uh, it's scary. Like I say, I, it scares me. I'm, I'm, I'll be totally honest. My days of going into fights and being excited about winning and, and uh, looking good are gone, mate. I'm scared. I go, I, I'm scared as anyone. I've got three kids to provide for. I, I don't want to end up in a box. So I am scared, genuinely scared. But like I say, what else can you do? I'm, I, what about what you said in the uh, press conference a couple of years ago? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I doubt the birds are dying in the ring, yeah. And, and I stand by it, because that's why I'm scared. Because I, I can't give in, Cooks. I can't back down. And I stand by what I said then, I still say it now. I just don't think it's appropriate to say it now after what's happened to my child, but I, sta I stand by what I said. I don't, re I don't retract that comment, I believe it. But I know it, because I, I live it. I can say it, because I do it. It's not like... See these clowns on the, on the fucking radio want to say stuff about me. I I can say that because I do it. I prove it because you see me, I get off the floor and I carry on fighting. And that lets you know that I put myself in danger to carry on. 
and to, to fight for it because that's why I'm scared. I scare myself because if I can get up, I will get up. If I can fight on, I will fight on. There's just nothing, can, nothing. There's no mechanism in my brain that goes tone, and that's enough. No mechanism tells me I, I, feel, I fucking fight. I just keep going. I can't stop, and, and that scares me. It really, really frightens me because there's gonna come a day, and 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 I swear to God, that's when I just pray a referee saves me because I, I won't give in. And, and it's scary, man. It really is because like I said, I've got three young kids, and uh, that's why referees are there. I don't think a referee's there to stop fights too early or make bad decisions. And I look at a boxing referee to be there purely for the safety of the fighters. That is it. I don't give a fuck about no judging or no points. So you score the fight how you want. That's your that's your personal opinion. When it comes to a boxing fight, there is only three people that matter. Me, him, and the referee to save one of us. If it needs to go to that far, that's it. And I'm telling you, mate, it, it, people don't realise, they just don't realise. So you know all the people that you comments you get on Twitter and social media, you'd have no idea what goes through a fighter's mind when, when the going gets tough. You try getting your face broken up, you try getting your nose broken, your jaw cracked, you, you, you hit the floor, your mind's spinning. You try having headaches after fights, you try fighting with broken hands, you try fighting with broken ribs, fucking detached flowing is I had so many things I've fought with over the years and I'm just thinking that's just me. It's fights who have fought with worse than what I've got. And then you think about saying stuff about that fighter. Obviously every every fighter reacts differently to this sort of negativity you see on social media. A wave of social media because it, it wasn't around 15 years ago for people to yeah. abuse fighters. I'll be fighters. honest, I don't like the fact that it, it, it yeah. gives it gives what, cowards a platform. What, what, what goes through your head? So you're say in fight week and I don't know the day before the fight, you're looking on your phone, you see. You know, I get knocked out. The people, the people, this, I, get I get that every day, so that just was yeah. never ducks back. The people around me like me to twist, switch it off, but you know what? I don't give a fuck. No one's gonna tell me or what. Okay? Because ultimately, what's gonna be is gonna be. I'm not the most religious person, I can't say, oh, you know, I go to church every week and God's looking down at me. Nah, man, I just fight. And I just Both pray. I don't even know who I'm praying to half the time. I pray to the people who I think are looking down on me, who must have cared about me when they were here. I don't know. I don't know why, but I just fight. I just pray. I just hope to be. I just pray to get home to my kids safe. That's all I care about. I don't care about nothing else. I don't care about people's opinions. Opinions are like assholes. Maybe we've all got that. I, I don't give a shit what you say. Say what you want to me on Twitter. If I think it's really disgusting and wrong, I'll just block you. Who gives a shit? It's not that hard, is it? And if if I if if I don't like what you say, but it's not that bad, I'll just push mute. You don't know. People probably mute me every day. I mean, I've got a lot to say on Twitter. I've got a lot of shit to say, so. I don't know, man. I just all I can say is, is like I say, I'm I'm not playing around when I talk about this business. It, it scares me. It, it frightens me. So I, I I don't when I before the gold ring, I get myself in a frame of mind. It's, it's on. I, I'm doing damage, and that's it. But the, at some moments in that fight, in all the fights, it crossed my mind, and I don't want to permanently hurt someone. And I want them to be able to go into their family too. So. And then the, the what happened last weekend just just brings the harsh realities home and what, what, what this sport's capable of doing to people. Whenever we get these really bad situations in boxing, there seems to be, from the outside boxing world, a call for it to be banned. Uh, it happened. Yeah, that's bullshit. <laughs> More people Traditionally, it happens after something. Of course, bad it's going to have. It's always going to come. You're going to have we them. Go. You're going to have them people, man. And you know what they call do-gooders. You know, if you want to do something, that's ridiculous. You can't ban a sport because someone's died. You know, what are you going to do? Ban racing car driving, ban American football, ban rugby, uh, ban K1, ban UFC. You know, where, where does it end? You know, people, 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 it's up to you what they want to do with their lives and how they want to risk it. You can't stop freedom of choice. No one forces anyone to a boxing ring. I'm not saying the, 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 the struggles isn't real. I'm not saying the dangers aren't real. They are, they're very real, but... 
we take that choice. That's why I always say I scare myself. I think no one's scared of me. I scare myself because it's me who's going through it. It's me. It's me who takes the choice. I chose to box, no one else. So it's on us. It's scary, but it's on us. It really is. No one manages it to blame. No promoters are to blame. Someone gets hurt, you get hurt. That's why it pisses me off when I've seen fighters in the past get hurt and they're no longer out boxing. Like, they have a dig at the managers and promoters after it's happened. Well, I'm not being funny, but no manager forced you to do it. No promoter forced you to do it. You know what I'm saying? No one's forcing no one to do it. We choose to do it. We sign up. So, you know, if you don't feel you're getting a fair crack of the whip or you feel like you're not getting your win, don't fight. You know, a promoter can't force a guy to fight. He can't do it. A manager can't force a guy to fight. First and foremost, the fighter chooses to fight. When you choose to fight, you choose to accept the risks that you take upon yourself. And I know that more than anyone. We've seen a, an unfortunate situation developing around Tyson Fury over the last yeah. couple of weeks. Um, everyone's got their opinion. I think the picture isn't quite clear uh, for people to make a sort of a judgment on it. You know it. what, mate? Don't kiss a man when he's down. Yeah, absolutely. And what I will say is, is it's obviously come to light with the cocaine, and he's he's come out and, and probably openly admitted to. You know, I think that picture was a little was a way of owning up to something. Jesus Christ, didn't see that coming, but he done it. Uh, now, what I will say is, it's disgusting what he's done. I don't agree with what he's done. He's, he's, he's He's taking recreational drugs. But what I will not do is, I won't cast him in the same light as I cast these steroid cheats. I'm not saying what he's done's right, I think what he's done's fucking disgusting. And I think he's wrong. And I think his family members will not be happy with him. His, his, his own inner circle won't be happy with what he's doing, with the cocaine thing. But what I will say is, he's definitely got mental issues. And mental health should not be, should not be sniffed at or, or, or pushed to the side. He's got mental health issues, mate, and he's not stable. I don't care what anyone says. I'm not making excuses for him because I've just said what I think about sniffing cocaine. I think it's wrong, I think it's terrible. But he's not mentally stable. And Tyson Fury needs boxing in his life. Uh, I spent a little bit of time with himself and his father and his uncle. And I'm telling you now, mate, his father and his uncle are good, honest people. Straight. If people live by their rules, the world would be a safer place. I don't care what people's opinion is on that. If you live by their rules in life, mate, the world would be a safe place. Wouldn't be living in the world we're living in now. Uh, is that how you saw that picture of him saying, "Yeah, I did it"? Is that how you saw that, mm. or is that him saying? I just think he's you. laughing. I think he's laughing at it. But listen, if you fail the drug test, you fail the drug test. It's as simple as that, Coos. I, I can't say he has or he has because I don't know for definite. But I mean, that picture was—you don't know with him because he—he's literally. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. You, don't bend. Know. Yeah. He, you know, he's nuts, but. I've I've spent time with the lad just one on one sitting here like this talking, and it's hype for the cameras, mate. We retired yesterday and come back in the space of three hours. At the amount of phone calls I got, Tyson Fury was retired, and I, and I and I didn't even see the tweet, and I said, no, he hasn't, no, he hasn't, and he just said he has told look at the tweet, and I said, I don't need to look at the tweet, he hasn't retired, trust me. He's having a little spat, he's having a little couple of hours. And he'll reflect on it and he'll come back and he'll say something different soon in a few hours. I do believe Tyson Fury's got bipolar and I do think he's going through a lot of mental problems and my heart goes out to him, it really does. I just hope he gets well, man, because he's got kids, he's got a missus who, who probably loves him very, very much. Well, she does love him very much, he's his wife. He's got a father who adores him, he's got an uncle who adores him, he's got cousins who adore him. It, it's a hard man. And I understand the pressures of, of of what he's been through at times. Cause let me tell you, there's times where I feel like I'm gonna crack up and I'm gonna go fucking nuts. And I just, I don't know. It's heartbreaking to see a man rise to become king of the world. And within a fortnight of becoming king of the world, the media are setting the store out to fucking tarnish his name. Why was the, why was the putting his his religious beliefs in papers, man, two weeks after he's just defeated a 10 year reigning champion. Why, are you putting, why didn't you put his religious beliefs in the year before? Because he's had the same religious beliefs his whole life. He's a man who lives by the Bible. And I just feel like his name's been tarnished since the day he won that belt, man. And I feel 
I feel for them, I really do. And like I say, I know, I've met him, I've spent time with him. He's a good person, mate, he's just got, he's just got issues and he, he needs help. Do you worry that he could yeah. potentially be without yeah, boxing? I do. Yeah, I do. And I feared that if he went into the Klitschko fight and lost it, I feared someone as mentally unstable as him could just end his life and take his own life tomorrow and that would, be, that would break me heart, it really would because like I say, there's more to life than boxing and he is mate, he is a good person deep down, I, I know he is his uncle is a good person, man, his dad's a good person, they're nice people and the straight and honest people, and very few people like them left in this world today the straight and honest people, I see it so much and I just hope to God he gets himself back together for his kids' sake, for his family's sake, and for his missus' sake. I really pray to God he gets himself back on track because, you know, it's, it's a sad, sad situation. Young lad, his whole life ahead of him. Forget boxing for a minute. I do believe Tyson Fury needs boxing. I believe it's his way out, and I believe it's his way of venting the frustrations and the angers that he had, problems that he has. But for a minute, we just need to get him mentally stable and, and in the right place man, and in the right place and in the right frame of mind and I pray to God mate that he does I don't know what I pray to to be honest but I just pray something works for the lad I really do because the last thing I want to do is pick up a paper and, and be calling his own to, to pass on the condolences it really is that that's how severe mental illness can be for people it really really can so my thoughts and prayers are with him once again I don't condone what he's done but I'm telling you now, mental illness is not to be snarled at. It's there to, it's there to be feared and, and help people if they're suffering it. Talk up and, and, and you know, help them. All right, well, Tony, thank you very much for uh, talking to IFL TV. Keep watching IFL TV. I'm sure you'll see me again in the press next week next or week. so. Uh, press Early. Conference. Early. Early. Early in the week. Yeah. Probably sell tickets. We need to, so I don't know, mate. Uh, it's what it is, cubed in it, the business we're in. You know, let's see what Blowjob can figure up or if he can keep convincing himself. The things he says are just unbelievable. Did you hear his latest one? People don't know how hard I've been pushing myself. Came over here for the weekend, came on the Friday, went home on the Sunday, managed to find himself a nightclub on the Saturday, though, didn't he? Silly boy. Silly boy. Take it easy, guys. Cook and Cassius, Tony Benio, Eiffel TV. Thank you very much.